Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have another in my series of birdhouses. This is one of the specialty birdhouses. This is not one of the monthly ones. This is the gazebo birdhouse. As you can see, it's kind of like a gazebo, and this one's perfect for a baby project, like this one with the little nest and eggs inside or I also have a wedding version and the wedding version gazebo itself is what I'm going to be making during this video and you'll be able to see the completed project over on my blog after this video is up and ready to go. Um, this gazebo has the open top as you can see so you can put stuff in the inside and then tucked into the base box is a mini album that just tucks right inside and is perfect for instance with this one uh, being for a baby so tweet um, then it has an envelope based pages which you can either make your envelopes or purchased envelopes um, that have tags and mats that fit inside although the pockets very interactive um, there's also a big big mat that fits in inside there and then on this back side some small tags that fit with the flap of the envelope and then more area for photos and then it continues on like this and then, as I said that just tucks right in to the base of the birdhouse it has some little uh, wood feet on it so let's go ahead and I, let me show you how to make this one the pattern for this with all the dimensions and instructions um, in written form is available over on my website. The information on how to get to my website is at the bottom of your viewing screen. So you're going to have pieces that you're going to create the box from. There's two longer pieces which are the front and back. You'll have two side pieces one of which will be part of the box, one of which will be attached to the back um, spine of the mini album. So what we're going to start out with first is you are going to attach the front and back chipboard pieces to the pattern paper that you want to use for the base. You're going to cut it so that there's about a half an inch around all four sides so that we can use these to attach the box together so it creates um, tabs in order to attach the box together. So you're going to do that with your two side pieces. Now the pieces that are towards the back of the box you're going to be attaching the chipboard to those tabs so that lines up. We're not folding anything uh, and wrapping just at this point but we're going to attach this piece in between these two larger pieces. Now I've gone through and put all my score tape and such on in the interest of time for doing this video but you um, can also use um, glue or other types of strong aggressive types of adhesives. So we're going to allow a gap that is equal to about the thickness of two layers of chipboard. Now this chipboard is oh, roughly about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit less, so our gap is going to be just a hair under like an eighth of an inch. You will find you'll have fewer cracking issues if you allow a nice gap in between the pieces. So we're going to attach this one over on this side, lining everything up like so. Now to the outside, I've already cut a piece of chipboard, or not chipboard, cardstock that's equal to the width of this back piece. And then it is going to attach here on the outside, lining up with the edge of my cardstock. So, oh, I didn't get the tape put on it. And then we will begin wrapping it around parts of the chipboard and it'll also be how we attach the top and bottom of that base box. So, Peel the paper backing off or if you're gluing using the glue. Already got it here on this chipboard piece back here. So I'm going to line that up so roughly right around in there. Nicely centering it. So now we have this full piece that is going to wrap into a U-shape 
this will be where the mini album will insert in and we'll put a top and bottom on there but first before we do that we want to finish off the end that's going to be the opening where the mini album goes in so let me go ahead and peel off this now when we're folding this back and wrapping this back I kind of just get started but we're also going to kind of do a little bit of a tuck at an angle see how I've done that at a little bit of an angle we're going to do that on each end just to get that so it's not straight up and down and then we'll wrap this down we can use our bone folder to smooth it out a little bit kind of tuck it around but we want that at that little bit of an angle so tuck that up against there so that puts these pieces at a bit of an angle it's nice and smooth on the outside do the same thing down at this other end and I've just run my score tape across the entire width of the paper I hate having all this paper stuff on my desk it's one of my weird little issues <laughs> all right so then tuck that down this is Webster's Pages paper and it's nice and heavy duty paper but it doesn't tuck quite as easily as some may but this is that effect that we want so we got that nice and smoothed off now at these intersections or the joints of our chipboard we're going to want to take a notch so that we get rid of some of the bulk when we wrap this at that 90 degree angle you want to make, make it a pretty healthy notch size don't make it skinny <laughs> so we got a nice healthy notch now our last piece which is going to get attached to the spine of our book we can go ahead and get that set aside for the moment we then want to bring out our top and bottom pieces and I'm going to run my score tape down the length of these tabs I probably could have done that before I put the the um, notches in and that would have notched the tape at the same time I'm doing this but I didn't so we're doing it this way and then well, these tabs will be what attaches the top and bottom to our base box so I'm gonna run it along both the top and bottom edges close to but not quite up to my chipboard but near it because again we're going to have that same gap that is a gap or joint that is equal to two widths of the chipboard that we are using now I like to start out by putting my pieces attaching it to this back piece Peel that off allow that gap now if it helps to make a bit of a shim piece by using two layers of the chipboard and placing that as something to, to make that gap feel free to do that I've just done so many of these that I can eyeball it in um, but if it helps you as a guide to do that feel free to so attach that on like so and then we can start going three-dimensional gently fold it up Make sure it's nice and attached down before we gently fold up same with this gently fold this always move gently and slowly on those first folds till it gets kind of used to doing this so then we're going to let's see if I can do this so I don't blast into the camera there um, we're going to peel this off and we're going to have it to where the corner butts up it's not overlapping but just butts right up that edge and wrap around do it over here on the other side if it helps Especially when it's a st nice heavy paper like this, 
sometimes it helps to fold it over first um, to get it kind of thinking about, oh yeah, I do want to fold. <laughs> All right, and then we'll wrap this down. And then do it the same thing over here on this other side. Then it's always a good idea supporting it from the inside, but to give it a good, good once over with your bone folder to make sure everybody's stuck down. Now where you've got these little pieces tucked in and stuff, you may decide that you want to squirt a little bit of glue in there just to hold that down a little bit. And since you got a couple layers in there, hold that just for a second to hold it in place. That looked like it was the only spot that needed it. Then what we're going to do is, okay, this is my top because I have a directional paper, so make sure I'm doing this on the top. I then have a piece of my paper cut to fit onto the top, and it should wrap around then into the inside slightly. I don't know if I cut that one the right size. The edge that's going to wrap to the inside. Go ahead and stick this down. This again can be done with adhesive or glue, whichever is your preference. And you're going to cut it to fit on your top and then wrap around to the inside by at least a quarter of an inch. And since I have the opening on this side, and this is my front with this directional paper. I'm going to have it. Now, I didn't cut this as long as I should have when I trimmed it, so it's going to extend not quite as far as I'd like to. And I should have checked it before I started, but this is going to work out just fine with my overlap. I would rather this wrapped around by a little bit more, but this is going to work just fine. So I can go ahead and wrap that around to the inside of the box. And I'm going to repeat that again uh, on the base. I'm not going to go ahead and do that right at this time in the interest of, of time. But you do the same thing on the bottom, wrap and wrap to the inside. And this is essentially going to be the drawer that your mini album fits into. So right now we can go ahead and sit this piece aside and go ahead and work on the gazebo portion. Now with the gazebo portion, in the pattern I give you dimensions to cut just a rectangular opening and I'm going to show you an example with that. Or you can also use a die cut opening. And for this one, I use the Tim Holtz Alterations die and this is the vintage cabinet card. Um, and this is um, the, one of the movers and shapers and you could put something on the inside. But I'm using that outline shape in order to make an opening. Either one will work. For instance, here on this one, this I used that arched shape to create my opening. I have a second one here that I've used with the rectangular opening. And then I've just added some punched um, cardstock to add some embellishment along. Either one works. Either one uh, makes for a really lovely, um, lovely opening. So either one. This one, dimensions are given in the pattern, and then this is a die cut that's just centered into the piece. So to start with, as I did with this piece, I've covered the outside to the edge. I've also then die cut um, not only my chipboard but my paper. So this is covered to the edge of the chipboard. It doesn't wrap around or anything. It just covers um, over to the edge. I've then also taken and cut the pieces that go on the inside and 
and what I have happening is on one side of each of them, I'm catching in the light correctly, um, you'll have a half inch tab that extends on one side. Everything else goes to the edge, edge of the chipboard, but along one side we will have a half inch tab. So what you'll be doing is the first one you're going to attach it to the back of the first of the four sides. So I've attached it to the back and the tab attaches to the adjoining um, um, side. I then attach the next piece, so for instance this would go over, this was the blank chipboard much like it is here, and then this piece went over the top, it extends over to the adjoining. I've done that, got this one all prepped and ready to go, got my tape around the sides, and then this will attach, and as you will see there will be a, um, an extending um, tab. Now, because this is all on the inside with these joints, I don't need to leave a gap. Here we can have these butting up. So I'm going to add my tape to this side right here. Now I've done adhesive around the edges, but I'm going to add some glue around the edge of the opening. If the glue will reach the little hole, there we go. Please ignore the snoring dog in the background. <laughs> He's getting a little old and getting a little loud, but he likes to be in my studio with me when I'm working. Alrighty. So I can then attach this, lining everything up with the opening, and it's easier to do if I do that before I pull the tape backing off. So now I can go through, move that out of the way for a moment, pull the tape backing off, and of course my phone rings, and so I'm going to have to ignore that. So ignore the, the silenced quote-unquote phone in the background. That is on the table, so it's making noise. Phone only rings when you don't want it to, doesn't it? Alrighty. So have that all attached. Should look nice and clean on the outside. Now we do have this tab here, so then I can attach this last piece. Again, because the tabs are on the inside, we can make those seams abutted. They don't have to have the gap because this is going to fold from the inside. I always like to fold that down, make sure everything lines up, give it a good finger press, and now add another row of tape right next to that fold to stick that down and we can use now this last piece and attach it down and again I'm going to do glue around the opening And I can attach this down. I just find it's easier when I'm trying to line it up with an opening to go ahead and stick that down first and then just lift up the corners to pull the tape backing off. Now you may find you're good at doing that and getting everything lined up and you can do it all at once. Whatever works the best for you, go with it. Alright, so then this tab on this side is going to wrap around and attach to this one and if everything's lined up right, you should be able to just fold it like that and attach it. And that will create 
our sides to our gazebo, then you can add whatever punched um, or die cut elements you want to add to it. So then we make that into a square and that creates the gazebo like top. Now at these, try to get it nice and square. <laughs> okay, stay square. <laughs> then I do have some punched strips that I've punched down both edges that I will attach at my corners. And this will square up as we continue the construction of it. So I've got these all pre-punched, pre-inked up, ready to go. And these will just attach to cover over these raw corners. And we're just going to attach it to the corners. Like so. Now I won't go ahead and do all four corners since I already have the other gazebo top made. But you will be attaching these um, to all corners. And just some simple um, low depth type of punch is what you'll want to do with those strips. So let me set this guy aside. Now I do, as I said, I had this one already all set up, ready to go. It's got those edges on. Now when I did put these punched, edge punched elements at the top and the bottom, I did put those on first before I went ahead and put those corners in. That way those ends were all nice and neat, neatly tucked in. So that gives us our gazebo. The gazebo is then going to attach to the top. Let's see if I can do this without squishing my. It's going to be attaching to the top of our box. Now, one of the things you're going to do is you're also going to put some little ledger strips in to give a base inside of our gazebo. So these are little half inch strips of chipboard that are just cut to size inside of there. And then you have a piece of chipboard that is for the base. Um, inside your gazebo that's about a half an inch above this base cut to size and then covered with pattern paper and you can slip that down inside and this will help stabilize it to where it stays nice and square slip it in right on down it then sits right onto that ledger you can then glue it down to that ledger piece um, inside so that gives you a nice little base inside um, that you'll be able to attach whatever elements. Um, I have a bouquet and some doves that goes inside this wedding version um, and then I have the nest and the eggs inside the baby version. So let me go ahead and set this aside. Next up we're going to do the roof for our, um, our gazebo. Um, the templates or the cutting instructions is in the pattern to create these triangles. So you're going to have four triangles that you are going to cover with your choice of the pattern paper. Now I don't cover the inside of them because I don't think anybody's going to be looking inside the gazebo, but if you choose to, you can go ahead and cover the inside of them as well. These are all going to attach together. You're going to start out keeping it flat by attaching here. This gap is going to close up to create the peak to the roof. Now we do want to have our gap that's about twice the thickness of our chipboard at each of these joints. We're going to then cover over those joints. Again, we have some punch strips that I'm going to attach at each of the joints. So what I want to do is up at the tip, I'm just going to trim this to a bit of a point. I am going to be covering over at the tip with some flowers and embellishments. So it's not going. Doesn't have to be real perfect um, up at that tip, but we just don't want it overlapping too much. So then I can peel off the tape that I have on the back. Again, you can use glue if you prefer. Adhesives, in my opinion, are a very subjective thing. What works for you is what you should use. And everybody, you know, kind of develops their own personal preferences to adhesives. Because climate can have an effect, what you, what's available to you, um, all sorts of factors come into play. Again, allow that gap about twice the thickness of my chipboard. It can be a little bit less on this top pieces. 
and you center the fold. They're going to overhang probably a little bit and we can just trim that off. I'd rather they be a little long and then trim them off. attach this third one and then I can go through with my scissors and trim off the excess so then the last one I'm going to bring over together and you can see that creates the peaked roof. So we can kind of hold these together with a little bit of a gap. Attach this on, centering on the fold. Make sure they're all nicely stuck down. Trim this last one off. So then that gives us our roof. It's got a nice peak on it. What I then do is I've cut some punch, a different punch to punch to put just under the eave of the roof. <coughs> Excuse me. So then I will attach these on the underside. I've trimmed them so that they fit nicely underneath. I've also scored them so that they fold down slightly. So we can just attach those just to add that kind of... You could also use lace if you would prefer over the punched pieces. Other kinds of trims. You can use your imagination with, 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 with whatever would work for you in terms of what you, th you want your theme to be. Um, whether you're doing the wedding or the baby or even just a floral springtime. I also think you could do this. It would be fun to do a spooky one for at Halloween. It could be pretty for a winter themed one um, during the holidays or the winter. Um, the sky's kind of the limit on what you could do with this one in terms of the little vignette that you could put down inside. So this is then going to glue down onto the top of my gazebo and you're just going to glue that in place. Um, so you will be, see if I can hold this all together while I stand it up. So your gazebo, this piece will glue to here and your roof will glue down to the gazebo top. And that is essentially other than the further embellishments that you want to do is essentially how the gazebo birdhouse goes together. I do want to show you how to finish constructing the drawer mini album that fits inside as well. We'll be attaching the rem last remaining side of our base to the spine of, of our, um, our mini album. So let me show you first off how to make the mini album cover. To do that, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard for your front and back cover, as well as the chipboard that we're going to be using for your spine. Now, I'm using some white cardstock to cover my spine. I gave you the dimensions in the pattern, so it overhangs a little bit more on each side to allow for me to punch the edges, and it's a half an inch at the top and the bottom. With our front and back covers, I'm allowing a quarter of an inch along the spine edge to attach to my spine paper. I'd rather it went chipboard to this paper rather than the chipboard to the paper to this paper. So I leave an exposed edge of a quarter of an inch. On the remaining edges underneath, I'm going to have those overhang by half an inch. So if I'm using a dimensional paper or something that has an element on it, I want to make sure that I, for instance, this has these stripes on it. I wanted to make sure those lined up, so make sure you have your spines in the mirror image. This one is going to then attach in between to create our cover, and then we'll wrap it. So if I lay them the way I want them, and then I flip it over, I can then attach this 
this edge gets attached here, again allowing that gap of two widths of my chipboard. I've done some adhesive on that quarter inch piece and then I've also done it on the edge of um, this paper. So again, allow that gap, stick that down. I'm going to do the same thing here along this back edge. Then after I get this attached into one piece, I'm going to wrap these edges to create my wrap covered chipboard cover. So again, allowing for that gap. I'm then going to now take and put my adhesive around the entire perimeter. Someday I'm going to figure out something to do with all this paper backing for my score tape. Maybe I'll make a pillow that's stuffed with it or something. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go around the entire perimeter and then we'll be ready to wrap those half inch extensions. At each of the corners we're going to turn these off at approximately a 45 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect to that angle but roughly. And you know you want to be just outside of the chipboard not right at the chipboard. Um, and so then we can wrap these. Before I pull the the tape backing off. I like to get these all started, especially when it's nice heavy cardstock paper the way this is. Get that wrapped nicely around the edges, starting at either the sides or the ends, whichever you prefer. I'm going to peel off my paper backing, and then we will go ahead and wrap those edges. Nice and tight up against the edge. Wrap that. And nice and tight against the edge. Hold it down. Now on these corners I take my thumbnail or the edge of my um, bone folder. Just kind of tuck. Make sure that's tucked in nicely at the corner here that's just tucked right around there and then you'll get a nice crisp corner that way so then I can go around the entire perimeter and wrap this around sometimes it's easier to do the sides and do the center section when it's in parts the way I have it on this one so that the spine is slightly a different paper Go ahead and give it a nice burnish with your bone folder. I also like to run my, the side of my bone folder along the edges. Kind of makes that fold nice and crisp along those edges. So then that's giving me my cover. I'm ready to gently fold it and gently fold it. Now I do want to go ahead and cover the inside of my album and I'm going to run out of score tape. I've got it pre-cut the paper for the inside and I want to put my tape or glue on each side of any joints and so sorry and those of you who watch my Ustream show I love the smell of brand new score tape and I always have to <laughs> give it a little sniff it's one of my weird little <laughs> That I do. People know I'm not feeling well if I don't smell my score tape when it comes out of the package. <laughs> Alright, so we've got that on each side of the joint, and that's with my heavy duty adhesive. Now, these pieces are going to attach down. I like a little bit of a frame around each side, but then it's going to overlap at least half an inch um, to this inside. Now, along these edges, they're not going to be taking any stress. So I can use a little bit less aggressive of an adhesive. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my, my ATG to attach those, except for along this edge, because this is where my score tape is. So go ahead 
ahead and line that up and attach it down. Again, dimensions are in the pattern for all of this stuff. up at the ends. Obviously if you're using a directional paper you want to be paying attention to how that is attaching. Again, gently fold. Gently fold. Now don't worry about this. This is going to be covered over with our stack the deck binding. So we've got, here's what my cover looks like. And I have this bare spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking my last side to the box and this is going to get wrapped and attached here at the end. So let me set that aside. Now just like we wrap the edges, I'm going to do the same thing to all four sides of this. It's been cut so that there's a half inch around the entire perimeter. And then I'm going to add my tape to all the sides. Now you may notice I've already got some holes punched in there and that's where I've punched in the center. Two holes that are half an inch apart that I'm going to thread some ribbon through and tie to give you something to pull your album out from under the drawer. You could also put a knob, bead, button, whatever you chose there if you want, wanted more than just a ribbon bow but you want to make sure and plan for that prior to attaching it to the spine of your album. So whatever it is you want to attach, do it first. So let's go ahead and do these sides. Again, my little thumbnail tuck at each end. Or if you don't have thumbnails, you can go ahead and use your bone folder but it just gives you a nice, clean, crisp corner. And wrap. Burnish. And then, as I said, I like to burnish all my edges. It gives a nice, crisp fold on the ends. It doesn't hurt to wrap on this side. So I've got my two holes punched, and I'm going to take my ribbon, cut it at an angle. It'll fit through the holes starting at the front, around, and through the whole, whoops, I then typically like to tie a knot first, and then I will tie my bow. I also have this weird thing, if I tie it upside down it seems to lay flatter, I'm not sure why. Bows. I know a lot of people are bow challenged, so if you have a cool method for doing your bows, by all means use it. Equal that out. I also suggest putting a little dab of a clear glue in your bow to keep it from untying. So then, now that I've got that all set to go, I can add some, some tape or glue to the back side. It is slightly larger than your spine but not by much, but I do like to keep my tape inside of that. This is probably overkill on the tape, but since this is how I will be pulling my album out and it will get some pull on it, I just as soon put too much than not enough. And then I'm going to show you how to make the pages to go inside your album. So this is then goes in. It kind of goes in upside down by the way I've done this, but we want to make sure that you're putting this on in the right direction. So the top of your drawer is towards the front of your album when you're placing this on there. And you're just going to center it in both directions and attach it on. 
so then it's attached on and it will slip right in to the base and should fit perfectly. All right. Gently give it a little bit more fold so it closes and more cleanly. Now I'm going to be using my stack the deck system of binding this. Um, I'm I'm going to run through it real quickly. I do have an entire video from a couple of years ago when I first started doing the stack the deck on how to do it. Essentially, stack the deck is done with three or more, you know, multiple um, channels or fins. The first one is going to be a quarter of an inch, and each subsequent one is half an inch wider, the channel itself. The fins themselves stay the same depth. Now, I'm using three quarter inch fins. You can also use half inch or whatever depth that you want those fins to be. Again, there's an entire video and these then attach down um, and center in the channel of the one. I'm sorry if my head's in the way. <laughs> I have to line it up. So you'll be attaching each layer or stacking the deck. And applying this now these are, the height of these are slightly narrower than the height of my album. I have about an eighth of an inch at the top of the bottom. This then is going to be attaching to that spine piece. So I have some of that exposed chipboard. I always like to attach things that are um, a critical part of the, the album, such as attaching the um, binding system to the album. I like to attach it directly down to at least in part ways to that chipboard. So then I'm going to center that on my spine. And then I always like to give it a good brushing down to make sure that you've got the adhesive fully engaged. So that gives me my spines to attach my pages too. So now I can go ahead and set this aside for the moment and I'm going to show you how I made these pages. Now I made my envelopes using the We Are Memory Keepers envelope board. I love this envelope punch board. It's got some really cool features to it. You can also use purchased envelopes. Now I'm using a standard A2 size envelope. You can do it that have the diagonal or triangular shaped flaps or they can have a square flap. Either one will work, purchased or pre-made. You can also use your Martha Stewart scoreboard to make envelopes like this as well. Again, these are A2 envelopes. First thing I'm going to do is trim a sliver off the bottom to open that up to allow me to attach it to the stack the deck binding fins. So I'm just taking a sliver, just a narrow sliver off. And then I have cut an insert, a folded insert. Again, the dimensions are in the pattern. This depth is contingent on the depth of your envelope. So if you're using a slightly different sized envelope, you may need to adjust this depth. But this will slip right down inside of the envelope. If you hit it on the right side of the folded parts of the envelope. I'm hitting the tab fingers in there, there we go. So it should slide down just like so, and it should be nice and even here at the bottom. Now, as you can see, there are three layers. What we're going to glue together are these first two layers, and we're going to leave this back behind the insert and the back of the envelope. Leave that open. So I'm going to reach down inside, make sure it's in place, reach down inside, and just lift the top of the envelope down and add a, just a narrow strip of glue to that insert. See inside, just to the insert, making sure everybody lines up. And then, whoops, and as I go to pull my hand out, I slip the insert out. So make sure the insert's down inside, right where you want it, and then you can attach that down. So now that has created a pocket right in here, but has left it open behind. So that's the back of the insert, this is the back of the envelope, and this is where we will attach our binding. But before we do that, we're going to take our flap and fold it to the back side. I then have cut another um, flap piece 
that I'm going to center and I'm going to attach my flap in a T shape and that's what will create those little pockets. Now if this were a straight across flap I would still do a T shape and it would just be more square little pockets. If you are using pre-purchased envelopes you want to make sure you'll in some way cover over the adhesive because if you're in a humid climate at all that adhesive could adhere to your tag so you want to cover over that in some fashion. So I've now applied glue close to the fold and in a T shape up the flap. If it were a square flap obviously it would be a shorter T. So I make sure this is centered right where I want it, flip the flap and stick it down. That has now created two small pockets for some small tags and it also allows a flap so that we can have two additional photos or journaling inside. So each of the pages has a flap. You can add a mat onto this side of the piece. Um, there's going to be a mat that fits into the pocket. Great spot for journaling here. Uh, great spot here for embellishing. There's also then a pocket right here for a larger mat. Flip it over, two pockets, and then two mat areas. So you're going to make six of these, which I've already done. So I've got my six pages, and then these pages are going to be attaching one at a time with that opening onto the fins. Now you can add some glue to the fins, and the fins, and it just slips over. So let me glue the first one on. I'm not going to glue all of them on, but I'll glue the first one on and slip it on. So I'm just adding glue or adhesive to the backs. Now if I were doing this myself, I do um, without anybody here, I would do it with adhesive. But I know that the glue is a little bit more forgiving for more people. So you just slips down. Your envelope should be slightly larger. So you want to center it. Kind of wipe away the excess. And so each of our pages attaches in that same way with this flap being to the front and I would go through and glue each of these on. I'm just going to slip them on for the moment and glue each of these on and then you can go through and embellish your album as you choose. But that's just a fun quick album even if you don't want to make the birdhouse it's a quick and easy album using A2 envelopes. As you know I love using envelopes for my pages and so that's going to give me the album that's going to then slip down inside of the box to the birdhouse. Now let me grab this other one and talk a little quickly about some embellishments. I've added some natural elements, some little twigs and stuff, and also some, some leaves and flowers. These can be purchased or you can use some of the new dyes and create your own. Um, again, some punched elements for this baby version. I've gotten this little twig nest and some little plastic eggs, added some flowers and such to it. I've also to the bottom added some um, little dowel ball feet, um, wooden feet that I've painted. Um, I've also up at the peak of the roof added some embellishment elements as well um, on this album inside this one. Um, as I noted, you can add some embellishments onto your cover. You're going to want to keep your cover excuse me, relatively flat so that it fits inside the box still. So be conscious of how thick you make your embellishments on your cover as well as inside. So here I am, I've attached this down but I allowed so that the photo can slip back behind there. Again a mat, some journaling, a matting area there. This has this nice large mat and rather than covering the whole thing with pattern paper when I'm going to be probably putting a larger photo, um, I've just done a little edge and the photo can then stick down underneath there. So you can use multiple colors of cardstock like I did in this one where I have um, varying colors. Here's where you have that little T shaped. So I've also taken some ribbon. I'm probably going to put a little button here just um, adding some elements. Again a mat. I haven't decided whether I want to put a photo there or make it journaling so I've left it blank at this point but you'll be able to go through your whole um, album um, and do whatever kind of embellishment. Again you're going to want because it has to fit inside that two inch deep box you're going to want to make sure that you don't get 
too heavy and juicy with your embellishments but you can then embellish your album to fit to fit your theme of your uh, gazebo because as I mentioned the gazebo can most definitely be the baby or wedding as I'm showing it here but it also would work well for winter or autumn Halloween pretty much anything it's just a fun um, garden type theme so you can go to my blog and check out how I did the wedding one um, after this video is up because I'll go ahead and get that one finished off so anyway this is the gazebo birdhouse part of the bird abode specialty series and you can get information on how to get that pattern um, at, on my uh, website and that information is at the bottom of the screen right down there so thanks everybody for dropping in and checking out another one of my birdhouse and I will look forward to showing you next up is going to be the August one in a couple of weeks and I look forward to seeing you then thanks a bunch